Aaron Dykes with InfoWars.com. I'm going to make this video as quick as I can, but I want to raise some important points while I'm working on a larger video that's going to be released tomorrow with Alex Jones talking about many of these same areas, but some of these are side points. Of course, this week there's been a lot of reportage on the Daily Mail article, 150 human-animal hybrids grown in UK labs. Embryos have been produced secretively for the past three years, and they are, of course animal human hybrids but that is not the first time they were actually developed as you can probably imagine uh... something has been going on secretly for much longer here we have admitted in two thousand three human rabbit clones uh... announced and no noses twitch chinese scientists have created hundreds of human rabbit hybrid embryos uh... so clearly three years ago in two thousand eight was not the first time this was going on uh, you also have coverage in National Geographic. Animal-human hybrids spark controversy over the hybrid creatures that are part human, part animal. Chinese scientists at the Shanghai uh, Medical University in 2003 fused human cells with rabbit eggs. Uh, we also have other areas you've probably seen before. Artificial liver could be grown on the backs of transgenic mice. Here we have a transgenically grown human ear that was just inserted DNA so this poor mouse would have to grow a partially human uh, deal. Uh, you know about spider goats and all kinds of other aspects. We also have here 2008 we have already created human animal embryos says British team in 2008 once again in the London Times uh, despite the fact that they're telling you here that 150 animal hybrids grow in UK labs, that that is the first time. I can also show you articles on artificial wombs. Pigs could grow human organs and stem cell breakthrough, which could solve organ shortage. Organ shortage. And so as they begin to sell us more and more on a transhuman lifestyle, and as the United Nations, the eugenicists, and the related uh, foundation and money people seek to depopulate the earth and severely limit human fertility, uh, you can see where they're also ramping up artificial life so they can sell uh, the ability to reproduce, albeit through these new methods, transgenic methods, at a premium because they will hold the intellectual patents, they will have the monopoly. It could be A, very lucrative, and B, uh, could allow the elites to totally transform life as we know it, our ordinary God-given, well, extraordinary God-given uh, rights and abilities to reproduce, uh, but not now, not after they've introduced elements into our environment, our diets, our food, uh, that have contributed significantly to a decline in fertility, especially in the Western world. Here we have scientists prepared to clone a human experiment aims to help infertile couples. So as the United Nations, UNESCO, the elites introduce uh, infertility elements, they will also sell infertile couples, those in the upper echelon with the money to pay for it, uh, ways to you get a baby after all, maybe even through clones, maybe through these transgenic things, artificial wombs, perhaps the use of pigs. I well, must have lost that tab. Uh, there's also a story about the use of pigs to grow human embryos, cows to grow human embryos. Uh, if you don't believe me, again, I've already showed you uh, rabbits carrying human embryos. Uh, now, one reason this is important is not only because the eugenicists and company are trying to take over our life process, but because it's a vision they've been promoting for a long time. Here's an interesting article I came across from Life Magazine from September 10th, 1965. This is something they've been working on for a long time. This isn't the beginning either. Of course, uh, you see it in the supposedly science fiction novel Brave New World, written by Aldous Huxley in the early 30s. You also see aspects of it in the supposedly science fiction H.G. Wells novel, The Island of Dr. Moreau, which features animal-human hybrids and uh, kind of elaborates on the moral implications thereof. Now here we have Life Magazine, a skull and bones outlet, promoting the control of life, a rather large goal for the eugenicists, profound and astonishing biological revolution. Absolutely it is. Audacious experiments promise 
decades of added life, super babies with improved minds and bodies, and even a kind of immortality. That is the eugenics pitch. You see aspects of that in the terrible way the Nazis carried it out, but you also see it in the promising, sort of hopeful, blasé pitches of uh, Ray Kurzweil and company. But the transhumanism started before that, one of the major figures, Julian Huxley. Uh, this is a four-part major series on the control of life, as you see here, again from 1965. And they're exploring prenativity, uh, the use of human embryos, and artificial wounds, and animal wounds. Uh, and it's all just crazy, isn't it? With bold new techniques, man begins to alter the process of reproduction. Absolutely an aspect of playing God. It's very dangerous, uh, but it's sold more as this great promise rather than a debate of how to limit and mitigate the risks here. Uh, we see here experiments with monkeys point to the feasibility of fetal surgery. Also included in this article, uh, ultrasound stuff, which I don't find particularly controversial. We also have here a really interesting futuristic device with possum infants, a placenta simulator, and infant opossums may one day lead to super babies, uh, just part of the beginning of the transgenic human embryos that would be carried to term, uh, either for organ harvesting or for clones or for other purposes, in the wombs of animals, which uh, the scientists work out to be compatible somehow, not that they know all the side effects. And we have living and dead calf fetuses may help solve the mystery of embryos that die. Uh, so whatever you think about stem cells and, uh, and related stuff, it's not a new debate. It's something they've been pushing for a long time. Here we have embryos in an experiment with some kind of test tubes, uh, radioactive uh, something going on there with the blood that's being fed into them. And right next to it, a uh, sort of propaganda piece within their own article, the quest for more effective means of birth control. So again, they want to, quote, control life, and they're going to introduce all kinds of means into the human cycle to limit our fertility while selling us on the artificial fertility. Plant experiments stir speculation that man might reproduce while bypassing sex. And again... Among the other methods for this, they want to eliminate the useless population as they see it, but they also want a lucrative way for a Monsanto GMO kind of um, lucrative money-making scheme where they control the patents and you've got to buy it from them and pay royalties, etc. Now this is an interesting spinoff from this whole concept. Cold storage embryos to send to the planets, a test tube colony. And here they show a test tube with sheep, cattle, swine, rabbits, but also man. And they say that the barnyard of the future could be shipped into space, quote, complete with the farmer. I don't know if you could see that blurry text, but they're talking about shipping uh, these little probes somewhere into space, and who knows what kind of colony of former Earth life may pop up elsewhere as they continue to manipulate our lives. Uh, just something to look forward to. The video will be out tomorrow, Infowars.com. Stay tuned.